Welcome to Lodge Antique. I'm your host, Dr. Raymond Chang. Well, just last year in March, Saudi Arabia said that it would consider accepting the Chinese yuan instead of dollars. Now, it's just a little over a year. Well, we're talking about February. Iraq says they will accept the use of Chinese yuan in its oil trade. Well, March 21st, Russia supports trade settlements in Chinese yuan. Just this April, early April, Brazil has begun to accept trade settlements, including oil and investments in Chinese yuan. So why is China's yuan for oil push in the Middle East seems to be not a threat to those oil producing countries. Is that solely because of China? Or, well, it might seem to be the case, at least the Western media would say so, but, but there is in fact a whole story behind, and the story relates to the US, to the United States of America, not China. Now this week, we're going to take a look at the story behind. Well, you know the U.S. is all about votes, or how about saying that the uh, democratic system in the West is all about votes? So, so you know when the Congress returns to Washington after the midterms, many members hope to score some victories before the 117th Congress concludes. And that was back in January 2023. So what do they do? Now, with American voters still struggling with record high gas prices, now some in the Congress already came up with the idea with revising a very, very old idea. Hope to prevent future pain at the pump and that idea is known as the no oil producing and exporting cartels act or, or which they call the NOPAC. so what exactly is the NOPAC? now the NOPAC bill which passed a, a senate committee seven against four on may 5th 2022 just last year was intended to protect the u.s consumers and businesses from engineered oil spikes but, but wait a minute, now this NOPAC bill would also change the US antitrust law to revoke the sovereign immunity that has long protected the OPAC and its national oil companies from lawsuits. So what does that mean? Now, it means that if NOPAC is passed, the US Attorney General would gain the ability to sue OPAC as members, such as Saudi Arabia, and the US Federal Court. And other producers like Russia, which works with the OPAC in a wider group known as the OPAC Plus to withhold output, could also be sued. And, and yes, the International Criminal Court just recently issued an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin just this March 2023. So the two basically sounds the same. I mean, in the sense that the United States of America can just sue leaders of any country as long as they see fit. Now, now that's a problem. In other words, the NOPAC is a US bill to pressure the OPEC plus oil group in a way. So the original idea of NOPAC, which might seem to be, well, not as bad, actually, well, quite good, now seriously backfires. Now, NOPAC creates more volatility in the oil market as well as hurting the American economy. And most importantly, it's international relations. Now, the White House spokesperson, Jen Psaki, said the Biden administration has concerns about the potential implications and unintended consequences of the legislation, particularly amid the Ukraine crisis. She said the White House is still studying the bill. So we can see how the U.S. Congress and the Senate works. As long as what it seems to be, you know, something that would help them gain votes and exposure, they would definitely, they would go and perform that kind of a knee-jerk reaction to do something legislatively, even if the results would have unintended effects of harming American interests. Now, the NOPEC bill fits just that example. Now, while naming a culprit may be easy, the reality is that oil markets are notoriously complicated. Now, at a time when the United States of America and the European Union are tightening sanctions on Russian oil exports in response to the Ukraine conflict, policymakers sh should be looking to promote stability in oil markets and encourage domestic American production. Yet, despite this reality, some lawmakers are pointing to NOPAC as a possible tool to better control oil markets. Better control? You call that better control? Now, passage of NOPAC would do just the opposite, not only creating volatility and oil supplies, but also removing a safety net of sorts that prevents prices from dropping precipitously or spiking astronomically. Now, because if you don't have NOPAC, this stability would allow for planned investments to be made in future American production capacity, which benefits U.S. energy exporters and, 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 and the European allies who face an uncertain energy future. So, why would this happen? Now, this has to do with the way American thinks. Americans are mostly individuals, and Asians, on the other hand, are collectivists. So, so what happens is for individualists, when you, when you put out a law, even if it's lenient, yes, it's good, but then if they don't see fit, they are not going to abide by it. 
So it, it really doesn't matter if the law is going to be stringent. So even if the punishment is severe, is heavy, they'll say, doesn't really matter. I don't care. I don't want to. I don't want to abide by that law. But collectivists do just the opposite. You provide them with a stringent law, and everybody abides by that law. So it, it's not a matter of uh, whether they like that law or not. They will just abide by it. So if you go back to the American Civil War times, back in those days, people were selling sick horses and and faulty guns. Those that warm fire, and, and you know, you just can't avoid these things, even no matter how high that punishment was. You know why? Because they just don't want to abide by that law. So what you have to do is that you have to give them some kind of a reward. So Americans want reward. If you tell them now, if you are going to tell me who provided me with those sick horses, I'm going to give you 10% of what they charge. Us. Wow, 10%! I want that reward, and all of a sudden, everybody abide by the law. So it's about liking a law instead of abiding by the law. So that kind of feeling is so different between Westerners or between、uh, well individualists and collectivists. So so that means pass no pack. How are you going to be rewarded? Wow! Look at the votes. Come on, you want to do something for populism, and that's exactly what the senators, the congressmen, what politicians—I mean, in general—are doing in the West. So, of course, the passage of NOPAC could further upset already strained U.S.-Saudi relations and create the spiral. Where American companies doing business in Saudi Arabia are retaliated against, and vice versa. Now, in the wake of an awkward diplomatic meeting earlier this year between President Biden and Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman, with the American and Saudi energy production efforts so closely intertwined, this could jeopardize domestic refining capacity and oil supplies. Now, and additionally, NOPEC's broad antitrust mandate could deter foreign investment in the United States of America and lead to greater, even greater, legal liabilities. So, if you still remember, there was an initial version of the bill that was introduced in 2000, the year 2000, proposing to strip state immunity from national oil companies of OPEC member countries, and that theme has been modified no less than 16 times since it was first introduced in in, in that year 2000. Now, now. Why was that? Even though there were sixteen different versions of the law and nobody wants to pass it, there is a reason for that because that could also lead to a tit to tat law. I mean, I mean, or sanctions that target American energy firms. Now, if you check the research from Rice University, the Bacon Institute, there was a report that suggests that a retaliatory OPEC could include avoiding dollar transactions and the American financial system, and that creates a strong, a very strong economic blow. And this is now happening. Now, now, added to those business concerns of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce warning that that suing nations over alleged oil market tempering could be met with similar lawsuits against the United States and its agents, and possibly even the military. Look at the recent reports and the leak of those highly classified documents. I mean, do you really think those nations, I mean, those nations that got involved and you are calling them allies, would not do anything at all, or would not do anything in return? They are going to do something. So, further efforts that would allow federal prosecutors to sue other nations under the assertion of unfair competition, despite the fact that this action is already allowed under the the Sherman Antitrust Act, could also prove problematic. Now, the text of Section 977 would make oil producing and exporting cartels illegal, which, upon passage, arguably would place OPEC's 21, 21 sovereign nations, including Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Mexico, and many others, in violation of U.S. statutes and complicate international relations. 21 countries, oil producing countries. Are you sure you want to do that? So, would OPEC accept? American claims that their pre-existing agreements are illegal. Now, and more importantly, is the U.S. willing to go to war against some countries that are considered allies to impose NOPEC law on OPEC nations? Now, at a minimum, NOPEC will result in market disruptions, resulting in higher prices, and worst, could result in a second oil embargo. While guarding the importance of Saudi oil to the American economy may seem straightforward, the, the history of the U.S.-Saudi relationship, as seen by lawmakers, American lawmakers and voters, serves to complicate contemporary sensibilities. The oil shocks of the 1970s, the Carter Doctrine, if you still remember that one, now and U.S. adventurism in Iraq and Afghanistan after the September 11 attacks overinflates the strategic importance of 
Saudi Arabia's counterparts and their natural resources and endowment in the minds of the American people. So one can forgive the ignorance of this popular sentiment because, you know, for decades it was reflective of American energy realities. Since the mid-1980s, Saudi oil imports to the US grew steadily, peaking at 2.3 million barrels per day in 2003. Now, but time has changed. The US can no longer maintain two simultaneous war, which means the Carter Doctrine saying that they are going to use force when it's needed in, in the Middle East is basically dead. Plus, a series of technological advancements have brought about unprecedented changes in American energy since early 2000. You know, in this context, we can understand Saudi oil not as a pivotal source of energy, but as a dribble that has been gradually but consistently thinned by an innovative and resourceful American energy industry. So if you look at that, removing oil from the equation would give the Pentagon and the White House additional leverage over the counterparts in Saudi Arabia. Now, meanwhile, if the United States of America spies lead the charge against the century's most significant geopolitical challenges, i.e. the great power competition with China and Russia, eradicating infectious diseases and, and, and climate change, it must work to separate itself from those whose action heard both a stand on the world stage and credibility with solely needed allies. And, and Washington cannot afford to continue to serve the interests of unreliable allies. Well, that's how they put it in the Middle East. And mind you, the biggest oil field in America, the one that produces something like 600,000 barrels per day, is being run by the Saudis. So keep them away from you is not a good idea. So from the US public image perspective, okay, if the United States aspires to lead the charge against the century's most significant geopolitical challenges, great power competition with China and Russia, eradicating infectious diseases and climate change, it must work to separate itself from those whose actions hurt both its credibility with sorely needed allies. So, so that's what they were trying to see. But try to look at it from the Saudi Arabia's perspective. Look at it from Asians' perspective. More and more top secret has been revealed and the fact that US has been creating enemies for Saudi Arabia. And, and that's why help with the Saudis in Yemen, things like that, is now no secret to, to people. So, so the fact that the US has been doing everything to maintain its 1980s Carter Doctrine is obviously an error, given today's geopolitical scenario. The world needs unity understanding and not clashes so until then ciao before you leave please be sure to like subscribe hit that notification bell and share this with your friends see you in the next episode